Okay, Phoenix and the Turtle. Um, so this is the Batman comic book, uh, Batman number 58. The Penguin has a secret, and the Dark Knight will pay the price. And the Penguin is this kind of bird-themed supervillain. Skip the advertising here. Um, okay, so it opens up um, with the, 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 the these henchmen are talking to the Penguin, and they're saying, oh, I'm sorry to wake you, boss. We're sorry. We didn't know. Boss, it's Penny. Um it's going to turn out that Penny is the Penguin's wife, although we've never seen her. I'm sorry, boss. Uh, it was this morning earlier. We're so sorry. You know, she was right outside, right outside the door to the club, and her throat was cut. There was a lot of blood. We can't say, we're so sorry, boss. You know, we called the doc. There wasn't anything he could do. I'm sorry, boss. We're really sorry. Um, bring me a top hat, a tuxedo, and an umbrella. Um, and then he goes and attacks Batman. Um, and this is sort of the classic, when you think about the Penguin as a character, this is sort of the classic uh, Penguin fight. You know, he looks crazy, and he has a, you know, he has like umbrellas that shoot guns. It's silly. Um, and then welcome back to Arkham Birdman. So he attacked Batman and he got, um, he got thrown in jail. Um, and, and well, the reason he's doing this is because basically the penguin had a boss, Bane, it turns out. Um, and he failed to do what Bane asked him to do. And so Bane, uh, killed the penguin's wife. Um, so Bane is running Gotham City from prison, and so Penguin attacks Batman and loses on purpose so he can get thrown into prison so that he can talk to Bane face to face. Um, but when the Penguin is, again, the Penguin's a bird-themed villain. He looks like a bird, obviously, and Penguin's kind of a bird. Um, but when he is in prison, he says, to this urn, let those repair that are either true or fair. So he's quoting the Shakespeare poem about these dead bird, birds who were in love. Um, and then he goes to meet Bane, and there's Bane, and they have a whole, you know, he says, look, I'm sorry, I failed you, or whatever. Um, the, the, this is part one uh, of a plot, a Batman plot called the Tyrant Wing. Uh, please notice Tyrant Wing um, is also a quote from that same Shakespeare poem. Um, so, uh, and, you know, he, he, and then he gets out of jail, and they, they let him, they, they let him out, and he wants to see the body, uh, and he goes to see, that's, that's the, the coffin uh, that his sort of wife is in. They didn't do a funeral. Uh, he's picking out a nice spot. Are we going to invite her family? Her father's been causing trouble. He's looking for her. Um, people didn't understand how special she was. Um, and then at the gravesite, he said, no one, they underestimated you. And then he has these, he wants to be buried next to her. So when he dies, he'll get the gravestone. Notice the words on the gravestone, though, are from the Shakespeare poem. So they loved as love and twain had the essence but in one. Two distincts, division none. Number there in love was slain. Um, now she's dead, um, and he's still alive. But he'll, when he dies, he'll be right next to her. And these are this is the same poem, and it's actually these are two lines from the poem, and these are the two lines right after these two lines. So he's he's thinking about it, and he says that you know they thought you were small and silly, um, you know you were treated your whole life as if you were less than human, and they never considered that you had a soul. And it's kind of a sad issue about Penguin. Um, and then he says he's got to get revenge, and so he, he and he says he has to uh, he has to go after Batman, but he's not actually going to kill Batman because Bane wants to kill Batman himself. So he says we have to punish um, Bruce Wayne, and so he's going to kill Alfred the Butler. And so then we cut to Alfred, and there's a whole thing where Alfred's cleaning in the Bat Cave, and don't worry about the Tyrannosaurus; it's like a replica. Batman, Batman complex is a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex in the Batcave. I don't feel like explaining that. Um, and Batman's going to go out, and he leaves Alfred at home, and then Batman goes to sort of, uh, he talks to Commissioner Gordon for a little bit, because, you know, people got hurt, uh, and he's investigating this shit, and blah, blah, blah. And then there's an intruder. Um, and then you have this shot. This is Batman sort of just swooping in and attacking all the Penguins guys. But what's happening with these boxes is it's quoting the beginning of the Shakespeare poem. Is it going to focus? Let the bird of loudest lay on the sole Arabian tree, herald and said trumpet be, to whose wing sound chase wings obey. So this is like a pretty big chunk of the Shakespeare poem. Um, then we cut back to Alfred, who someone's broken into the mansion, um, and he's, you know, we know, we know he's in trouble. And once again, this is the Shakespeare poem. The rest, it keeps going. Um, you go to the next page, then they're going to kill Alfred. They got like a laser sight on him here. Um, and once again, the Shakespeare poem continues. Um... And then on the next page, uh, the penguin ends it, for these dead birds sigh a prayer. So it turns out all these boxes, they've been in quotation marks, but the whole issue, we didn't know who was speaking, um, but it turns out it's the penguin who's been reciting this poem about these dead birds who are in love. Um, and then it just kind of, and the penguin ends the poem, for these dead birds sigh a prayer, and that's the last line of the poem. So the whole issue, the penguin has been like reciting this poem. If it was a movie, it'd be like voiceover narration. Um, and then that, and then it ends. Um, and I, I was totally fascinated by this. Um, 
I was so fascinated by this because it's a it's it's a long it's a, it's a lot of Shakespeare to put to ask Batman comic book fans to read, and it's not like it's I, I often I'm like God Shakespeare is easier than you think. This is fucking difficult Shakespeare, um, and I was just fascinated by it showing up in a Batman comic book. So I thought, let's take a look at the poem. Might be kind of a fun thing to do. Um, the poem is divided into th for, for you guys know stanzas. A stanza is like a paragraph. Um, so the first thing you need to know about the poem um, is it's divided up into sections. Poem's a lot, three sections. Poem's easier to understand when you realize it has three separate sections. So let's just be clear on what those sections are. So. The first section is one, two, three, four, five. The first sec, the first five stanzas. So just from here to here, these five, this section here, the first five stanzas. Um, it's a bird funeral. The phoenix and the turtle were very in love, and now they're dead. And so the birds are gathering for a bird funeral. The first five stanzas of the poem, the first section of the poem, is basically deciding who is allowed to go to the funeral and who is not allowed to go to the funeral. It's really basically like who are the good birds that can come to the funeral and who are the bad birds that are not allowed at the funeral and what role do different birds. So different birds have to do different things at the funeral for this bird funeral. Uh, and again, the phoenix is a magical bird. Turtle dove is a regular bird. Um, but the both birds are dead, um, but they were very much in love, and now we're attending their funeral. So the first section of the poem is just literally, um, the first five stanzas is just which birds are allowed to go to the funeral, which birds are not allowed to go to the funeral. And if you are allowed to go to the funeral, what job do you, the bird, have? So it's, it's a list of birds and their jobs at the funeral. The next section of the poem, um, and you can tell it's another section because of the way that it begins. You can, you can see it. Um, here the anthem doth commence. Love and constancy is dead. So the, the anthem is like the thing that's being said at the funeral. Um, they're saying something about these sort of dead birds at the funeral. And it's in the second section, which is which starts with the line, um, here the anthem doth commence. So obviously that's the beginning of another section. And that goes all the way until the section labeled Theranos. It has it was one section has like its own title. Um, that middle section of the poem. Um, which goes from let the anthem doth commence all the way to the word threnos, um, is basically uh, the nice things we're saying about how special the relationship between these two birds was. They're, the birds were essentially soulmates. They were deeply in love. Um, and they were in love in this really... The, they're, they're trying to describe how perfect their love was, these two birds. Um, and their love was so... You can see why the penguin likes it, because his wife has been killed, and he loved her a lot, and so he's, he's got a poem about birds in love. And it's a poem about how they're soulmates. It's really just what was said at the funeral is these birds had a, an amazing, made a perfect love relationship. It was sort of a gorgeous, beautiful thing. Um, and and that's that's the and then that, that's a whole section of the of the poem. But the thing that made their love powerful was that it was bigger than reason, meaning like logic understanding, right? Because things of the heart are bigger and more complicated than things of the brain, says the poem. Um, and so the, 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 the middle section is about how amazing their love is, but it's, it's, it's amazing, but it also doesn't make any sense. Um, it's a, it, they're, being soulmates is like, brings up all these complications and paradoxes. It's hard to understand. It's so hard to understand that your brain cannot understand it. So the last section of the poem is a little mini poem written by reason, meaning like, Logic. Think about like think about it like the god of logic or the god of brain power. And he writes a poem and he's basically just like, I'm defeated. I can't make sense of this love. It's too powerful. And he says, and he, so the because reason is frustrated by these birds because they're so in love with their love doesn't make sense. Um, and so reason can't understand it. And so reason has a little poem at the end where he says, you know, you guys are the, the love between these birds is sort of more powerful than me. I can't really fully grasp it. Um, and that's how the poem ends. Um, so essentially the, the beginning of the poem is which birds are allowed to come to the funeral and what do they have, what jobs do they have to do and which birds are not allowed to come to the funeral. The middle section of the poem is let's say nice things about these dead birds and how much they were in love with each other. Um, but part of that involves like the God of reason or the God of logic being like, oh my, this makes no sense. Um, so he, the God of reason or logic gives a little poem at the end to say, I am defeated. Their love is more powerful than my intelligence. Uh, it's too hard to understand. Um, okay, so I'll pick up. Well, let's start. Go through the now that we have. We've got the sort of abstract structure of it. Now we can go look at some individual lines in the next video.